All right. We have a full agenda today, so I want to kick things off sooner rather than later. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining our webinar. Uh, we're happy to welcome our channel partner members, including those loyal members of Seagate Insider to today's event. And we hope you find the content really valuable and always that we exceed your expectations. The goal of today's session is to give you a broad view of how the edge to core computing evolution is affecting the surveillance marketplace. Our guest speakers will touch on the surveillance data explosion, as we like to call it, and uh, as well as show you an example of how one reseller is handling this in practical applications throughout their solution offering. So let me kick things off here. I um, want to give you a quick snapshot of today's agenda. You'll see uh, other agendas throughout the, the deck. But this is to kick things off, and just want to let you know today's guest speakers are Jessica Burton, who is Seagate's Global Product Marketing Manager for the Surveillance Segment, and Patrick Kelly, Director of IP Video Solutions for Digital Watchdog. For those of you unfamiliar with the company, Digital Watchdog manufactures security and surveillance solutions worldwide, and it offers IP products including IP cameras, recorders, network devices, software, mobile applications, all sorts of things related to this industry. Um, and the company was founded in 1987. It is based in Cerritos, California. My name is Joshua Walty. I'm Seagate's Global Partner Lead, and I want to be your host for today's session. Just a reminder for those of you who may be new to WebEx, um, you are all on mute, but we still want to hear from you. And so uh, you will see the controls on your screen as you see them here. Um, WebEx has recently updated their interface. So to ask us a question, um, you can use that bubble question icon in the center of your screen, or you can even find that chat box over to the lower right-hand corner of your screen there. Um, as a reminder, just want to let people know we will be drawing the prize, which is an 8-terabyte Seagate Skyhawk surveillance drive at the end of the session after we run through the Q&A. And so, as always, you have to stay to play. But before we get to the presentation, um, let me make sure that both our presenters can be large and in charge. Uh, Jessica, I know we're going to kick things off with you. Let me go ahead and do a mic check with you and see if we can hear you. Yeah. Hey, Joshua, can you hear me? Sure. You bet. I'm going to go ahead and pass you the ball, Jessica, and uh, I will give the floor to you. Perfect. Okay. Well, let's get things started. Good morning and afternoon, everyone. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit in on the webinar and learn more about the Surveillance Edge to Cloud Solutions. Uh, brought to you today by Seagate and Digital Watchdog. Um, and Joshua, can you remind me how to forward these slides, or should I just let you know when we need to move to the next slide? Yeah, if you want, if you want to share from your desktop, you can go ahead and use that up arrow to share your slides from your desktop. Otherwise, um, I can put the master presentation in your hands, and it's those little arrows to the far left hand of your screen. It's your choice. Uh, let's do this. I will share my screen. That might be the easiest route to go. So, um, okay. So everybody will give me one second here. I'll have it up and going. You got it. Oh, actually, let me share from the other screen. We're making sure that WebEx is behaving itself this morning, Jessica, but. You're, you're a pro at this, so I'd rather hand it off to you to share um, no than have worries. it from the deck. Great. <laughs> Looks great. Away you go. Okay. Um, so before we dive into the agenda, I wanted to give a quick shout out to those of you attending ISC West in April in Vegas. Um, both Seagate and Digital Watchdog will have booths there. At the Seagate booth, you can take advantage of daily raffles, learning from our in-booth speakers, and we'll actually have a really cool cityscape game, gamification of smart cities, so you can learn more about that. Um, and of course, we'll have a social hour, and you can sign up for our partner program. So I hope to see you there. We've already covered who's the speakers. Um, so let's dive into the agenda. Uh, the topics we'll be covering today will be how surveillance, is data, uh, surveillance data is rapidly growing due to the evolution of surveillance needs, and ultimately what that means from an infrastructure standpoint, edge to cloud. Um, Patrick will then cover uh, Digital Watchdog's edge to cloud point of view with a demo showcasing the need for specialized uh, surveillance storage and why storage will continue to grow.
Uh, it's no hidden secret that data is growing rapidly. IDC recently published their Data Age 2025 report that shows that the data sphere, as IDC refers to it, will grow to 175 zettabytes worldwide, which is actually up by, um, from 33 zettabytes in 2018. Uh, storage shipments across all media types over the next four years will exceed the growth that we saw in the past 20 years. So let's just let that sink in. More growth in the next four years than what we've seen in the past 20. So we're really seeing an exponential growth, and, or rather, an explosion in data. Um, and surveillance is a key driver in that um, data, data explosion. And we'll di di dive into like the details of that shortly. But by 2025, hard drives will be the prim primary mode of storage, with SSDs and tape also rounding out the top three. Uh, Real-time data at the edge will grow from 15% in 2017 to 30% uh, by 2025. According to IDC, uh, video surveillance is a large piece of the pie and will continue to be a significant driver for the worldwide data sphere. As surveillance evolves, that data will expand beyond video to data from IoT applications, metadata resulting from analytics, AI and machine learning, and ultimately productivity data. In 2015, uh, surveillance held almost half of the data sphere uh, growth. However, for those with keen eyes, you'll notice pretty quickly that uh, that surveillance number appears to drop by more than half in 2025. Um, that's a little deceiving because, as I mentioned earlier, surveillance is evolving to also include AI, analytics, and productivity data, which is the biggest growth areas for customers to make real-time decisions based on raw data like surveillance. Uh, productivity is really defined as data that makes sense of multiple types of data, like video and sensors, to provide insight for better business decisions. <clears throat> One example of growth in uh, productivity data is how the Union Pacific, a U.S. railroad company, turned to using machine learning uh, technology, technology to inspect all their rail cars. Uh, they had a system that's an image area that was basically a structure built over the railroad tracks housing cameras, lasers, um, radar, and sensors so that they can uh, actually scan mile-long trains moving at 70 miles per hour. And they were able to capture 50,000 uh, photos per second. So that's a lot of data. That's actually 30 gigabytes of data every few seconds. And those photos are then stitched together to form a 3D image of the train which are then analyzed in near real time to inspect for defects um, that need to be repaired. So the Union Pacific has begun testing a sensor to also place on the rail cars uh, to detect over 40,000 measurements of vibration and movement of data. And that's really what that productivity number is. It's making sense of all that data, all the sensors, uh, all of the photos and video that you're able to capture. And I thought that was a really cool example of how that's being pulled together for the future. That's really the future of 2025 and beyond. So uh, the, uh, the fact is that we're ushering in a new era. In Seagate, we believe that the future will be edge to cloud, and we have seen data be centralized in mainframes, and then distributed in client server architectures, and then again centralized to cloud again in the early 2000s, and then become distributed with the need for the edge. And so what, why is there a uh, rise in the edge? Well, with the proliferation of devices like IoT sensors, mobile devices, platforms, and other um, closer to the source, uh, or platforms closer to the source, there'll be need there will be a need for computing and processing to be closer to the edge rather than centralized. Uh, so this has broader implications to how storage is going to uh, be moving in the future. So a couple of use cases, kind of like what I mentioned before with uh, you, the Union Pacific, um, it, the productivity numbers, the AI with surveillance can be used in a number of ways. Um, one simple uh, example is AI is being used for laser vision and to cut up chickens <laughs> in a factory or uh, to optimize irrigation for lettuce farms. 
And then one example that's closer to home for Seagate, we actually uh, use cameras at the electron microscope level uh, to understand how we can optimize our over 1,400 steps to manufacturing drives. Um, and so obviously there's a lot that goes into it, but um, from our standpoint, we believe that with the AI being trained over time with surveillance video and other sensors, that uh, that, that system is actually going to be more effective at detecting errors and defects than a human subject or a human subject matter could. So a very inter interesting use case study that we're already implementing ourselves. Centralizing surveillance data to the cloud simply isn't an option moving forward. So really the rise of edge is going to be very prolific. It provides uh, lower latency for quicker real-time decision making, higher bandwidth, fewer or no subscription fees, something that you would be very familiar with if you're um, with a cloud, and often has fewer compliance requirements to meet. Not to say that there isn't compliance requirements at the edge, but there's a lot less to consider um, when you're considering a cloud service provider or a third party. Um, that obviously adds another layer of uh, complexity. In the context of surveillance, we have moved from analog to digital and then to the convergence of IT architectures in IT 3.0. And now the edge in IT 4.0 with IoT and AI leading the, the charge. I think I missed part of those <laughs> steps there. Um, so with evolution to IT 4.0, there are several things to understand about how storage will be architected um, across the framework. And so let's dive into that right now. Uh, there's really three application tiers of storage, um, endpoint, edge, and cloud. And this is not something that just Seagate is saying. This is something that a um, number of industry analysts, analysts are also recognizing, specifically IDC's uh, Data Age 2025 report. So what uh, is the endpoint, what is the edge, and how do we define the cloud? So endpoints are all the devices on the edge of the network, including phones, industrial sensors, connected cars, wearables, and obviously surveillance cameras. Um, then we have the edge, which refers to appliances that are not in the data centers <clears throat> and are closest to where the data is captured and stored. Um, so they're closer to the endpoint, um, but they can scale a little bit better as far as storage-wise. Um, this includes MVRs and DVRs, or even servers in the field or micro data centers located regionally and remotely for faster response times. And then when we're looking at the cloud, um, the cloud consists of uh, designated uh, computing da data centers in the enterprise and cloud providers includes all varieties of cloud computing, including public, private, and hybrid. So a key aspect uh, characterizing the data sphere today is the increasing, increasingly critical role of endpoints and edge, which is where all the digital data about us or for us is delivered to us to help inform real-time decisions, uh, personalized services, and other latency-sensitive actions. Well, data gathered uh, from endpoints is collected at the edge, uh, which is an important location for delivering the intelligence and analytics necessary to provide faster response and better end user experience, as well as to accelerate and bring new levels of efficiency and quality to businesses. So endpoints are going to require the trade-off of higher serviceability, shorter lifespans of uh, data being able to stay on and on be retained on those devices for it's, before it's either uh, gets removed or it gets uh, transferred to other, uh, to either the edge or the cloud for further analytics and deep learning. The edge allows for more storage, um, processing and filtering of uh, for additional analytics. Uh, typically this includes your MVRs and DVRs and customers need to consider manageability for hundreds of cameras typically along with security and data protection, even just from a natural disaster standpoint. Um, and then obviously quality of service and um, data availability is very important just to accessing uh, that information quickly. Uh, this data is then filtered and processed um, 
from the edge, and even uh, the data, raw data from the endpoints can then be uh, transferred to the cloud for deeper analysis and long-term retention. The cloud is what I would call a repository for petabytes of data, and it requires serious consideration on quality of service similar to uh, the edge. And it also requires manageability and visibility across sites and branches because, of course, you're talking about uh, petabytes of data coming from probably thousands of cameras. And you need to make sure that you have high reliability and efficiency of storing that data for archival as well. Um, obviously, there'll be some deep learning in the cloud that you can do as well, uh, but from a longer term retention uh, standpoint, you'll want to make sure it, it's economical and efficient uh, for archival. So storage considerations, um, their priorities vary across different tiers. Uh, data security is the biggest consideration for endpoints, while data preservation and protection is key for the edge. And the cloud, on the other hand, uh, requires significant considerations, again, around management capacity. Obviously, you're going to be dealing a with a lot more capacity and racks of uh, data, and then uh, obviously also quality of service and uh, data availability. So uh, with data flowing from the edge to the cloud, let's look what uh, Seagate drives uh, best fit the, these different tiers. Uh, Seagate's storage portfolio spans from edge to cloud, with Seagate's uh, secure features covering you from end to end. Edge applications with MVRs and DVRs uh, leverage the Skyhawk portfolio with Skyhawk AI and Skyhawk. Um, Exos and Nitro pretty much straddle both the edge and cloud tiers based on use cases, and we'll co cover that in a little bit more detail here in a second. So taking a closer look at uh, the edge, uh, customers like retailers will leverage Skyhawk for mainstream video surveillance, primarily for security purposes. Uh, these retail stores that are leveraging AI are also relying on surveillance-optimized drives like Seagate's um, Skyhawk AI to power their on-site MBR storage solutions. Um, they, so the, the Skyhawk AI uh, product is going to be a little bit different from the Skyhawk uh, product in that it's going to be able to support up to 64 high-definition cameras and 32 additional AI streams. Um, it's also equipped to provide 24 by 7 um, operations. That's the same as Skyhawk as well, um, but it also has uh, image-perfect AI firmware so that you're not dropping any frames. Um, both Skyhawk and Skyhawk AI have Skyhawk Health Management, which provides advanced drive health monitoring and optional rescue data recovery services. So taking a closer optic at uh, the cloud, retailers are, business <laughs> retailers are businesses managing surveillance systems from hundreds of branches locations are also deploying Seagate's Exos uh, drives and Nitro solid-state drives. Um, basically, you're aggregating and filtering petabytes of video and metadata from thousands of cameras uh, in a single enclosure. So that's where really Exos is going to be best fit in maximizing that storage efi efficiency while also reducing uh, the hardware footprint. And then meanwhile, Nitro enhances server perf uh, performance, enabling instantaneous uh, data processing and availability for real-time predictive analytics and decision-making, because uh, Nitro, unlike Exos, is going to be your SSD uh, drive. And it's going to be uh, very good at computing and doing those deep, uh, deep learning activities in the cloud. Um, our Seagate Secure Portfolio covers SED, CAA, and FIPS compliance, while also having Power Choice bundled in. Uh, we also have Hammer Technology, which will take our capacities to the next level, um, into the 20 terabytes and beyond, with increased aerial density moving forward. So, at the end of the day, choosing the right drive for your application, whether it's the edge or cloud or even somewhere in between, is incredibly important to not only making sure you don't lose a frame of data, but also ensuring your system's longevity, reducing maintenance calls, and lower, lowering the overall cost of ownership of your system and storage over time. 
So now I'll actually hand it over to Patrick to cover how storage plays an uh, incredibly large part in VW solutions and how it's growing. Thanks, Jessica. Okay. This is Joshua here. I've got you covered here, Patrick. Let me go ahead and pass you the ball. And uh, while I do that, Jessica, you might take a look at some of the questions that came in. You know, we've got a lot of folks that um, they're dealing with a lot of different aspects of supporting their clients and, you know, in this space. Um, and in general, there's, there was a question that came in about um, if someone is a small business, should they have edge or cloud surveillance storage? Um, so just wonder if you could address that while we hand things over to uh, Patrick. Sure. It goes, um, so if you're a small business, it really depends on what you're looking to do and how many cameras you're supporting and if you're doing analytics, right? Um, so when we're considering small businesses, typically you're going to be at the edge. Uh, not to say that you're not using the cloud, but typically it makes a little bit more sense uh, um, economically and efficiency-wise uh, to be at the edge. And so you'll likely be using an MVR or DVR. Um, if you are planning to do analytics, uh, Skyhawk AI is going to probably be a best fit. But if it's just really for security purposes and uh, identifying incidents, uh, then Skyhawk is a really good fit and will match all your needs. So back to you, Joshua. Great, great. And obviously, we'll be sending out information to all the folks who attend the webinar where they can continue their investigative journey into all things surveillance and surveillance storage. Um, I did want to make sure, Patrick, uh, we did pass you the ball, and I do want to apologize. Uh, we have so, a bit of slide rendering issues with WebEx this morning, um, but I think, uh, Patrick, you'll be able to talk through this for the rest of your slides and as well as your demo. Take it away. Okay, great. All right. You can hear me okay? Yep, sounds great. Joshua? All right, great. So I'm just going to catch back up. Uh, this is the presentation, so we're just going to move back to where Jessica was. Uh, I don't think that's the presentation, jo Joshua. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get you back to here. And Mark, she was right here. All right, Patrick, can you see that? Patrick, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, and okay. uh, the the presentation I'm getting is the. Hold on, let's let's switch over to that one. There we go. All right, and we'll forward over. Oh, okay. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So um, so at Digital Watchdog, we use. Uh, Seagate drives and Skyhawk surveillance drives and a lot of our uh, products at, at the edge. We'll cover that here in a second. But as, as Jessa was talking about, we do have solutions for the, uh, the endpoint, the capture and censoring with our, uh, uh, our panoramic cameras as well as our single image sensor cameras. Um, and then we move into the edge with our Blackjack server, server devices. And we also have a cloud component of our software right now where we're doing cloud management um, Management of the of the edge solution, as well as connectivity and providing connectivity, remote connectivity through a secure cloud connection. So for the endpoint type products, we use uh, that's that's our uh, Megapix Cast system, which is camera as a system. We'll cover that here. We'll cover all these in just a second. But uh, the edge product being our blackjack servers, workstations, and network attached storage devices, uh, all of which include uh, the uh, Skyhawk surveillance drives. Um, the uh, network attached storage devices also communicate with that, with our endpoint solution being the Megapix CAS product. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, the DW Cloud um, provides uh, connectivity and uh, remote connectivity to the site as well as management. So for us, one of, the, one of our feature pieces is what we call Megapix CAS or camera as a system. Uh, and this essentially combines the camera with a full-fledged video management software, and we talk about it being uh, DW Spectrum inside. So we're going to show a demonstration of Spectrum here in a moment. But basically, this is everything in one. Uh, it's a PoE-powered device. Plug it in uh, as soon as you apply power to it, and you can activate the record schedule. And the, the key benefit of this product is it's not uh, – it's not scaled down. It's it's the full version of the video management software that I'm about to show you that we also run on our Blackjack servers as well. Uh, so we provide this this unit in either 64 gigs or 128 gigs of uh, SD storage on board the camera, 
And then we can also uh, configure these to back up to our Blackjack network attached storage devices where we're running the uh, Seagate uh, uh, surveillance drives. Our Blackjack lineup is our, our NVR, network video recorders, uh, client workstations and, and network attached storage devices. So these are all preloaded with our DW Spectrum IP video management software. We have a full range of uh, Blackjack NVRs from the entry line small uh, two terabyte type systems all the way up to our large X-Rack where we're over 500 uh, terabytes of storage incorporated in the X-Rack. And so we offer that wide range for a variety of different applications and camera sizes as well as resolution. So uh, the software supports resolutions up to our 48 megapixel uh, panoramic camera as well as you know, our standard resolution 2, 4, uh, 5, uh, megapixel uh, cameras, our nine megapixel fisheye, all supported within the software and all supported with the uh, with, within our blackjack solution. So for us, the uh, the key driver with uh, with our product is the DW Spectrum software. This is our flagship product. It uh, it is a open architecture, cross platform capable uh, software, meaning that it works on both Windows and Linux platforms. It works. Um, we also have a Mac client available to it. The big feature with this product is, is the user interface being dramatically easier to use than anything out there in the marketplace. We pack in lots of features and we don't charge extras for those features, so they're standard. Things like failover and Active Directory integration are all included. Um, this solution can be part of an end-to-end -end solution that we provide or we can fit components in there. Uh, the system does not require any um, annual agreements as far as for upgrades. Uh, upgrades are included and we can scale the system as part of it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the cloud client connectivity for, uh, and data proxy through DW Cloud provide us remote connectivity to that. So let's go ahead and just uh, give you a little taste of DW Spectrum. So this is our live demonstration system that we maintain on our website. Um, and so I've, I've logged into this uh, system, and you can see here that I've got uh, two servers in our California office as well, well as one in our Tampa office that I'm based out of, uh, and the cameras for each of those offices are nested underneath there. So the storage for each one of these Blackjack devices is located right within uh, each one of those servers, uh, and so we can communicate right directly to that. Um, at the edge at each one of those locations. As I mentioned, the user interface being very simple and easy to use, it allows the operator to just double click on a camera and bring up a couple of cameras and display or multiple cameras from multiple locations just by clicking on the camera. At any point, you can double click on a camera and bring it full screen. And then you can use your mouse wheel to just zoom inside of it, pan around, double click to go back out double click to go to a multi-screen. We can bring things like camera devices. We can also bring things like um, input-output devices. Uh, so if we want to do, for instance, turn things on and turn, turn things off, uh, we can control that right through here. So you'll see we have a, a uh, little uh, the ability to go in and turn things on and off through that as well. Um, in addition to bringing in uh, cameras and input-output type devices, we can also bring in things like uh, web pages. So you can bring in, for instance, a web page. So what, one of the things we'll be featuring at uh, ISC West is the, uh, the Skyhawk Health Management dashboard being brought right into the um, Spectrum interface, so you'll see here uh, kind of a quick little sample of that, a little preview of that in terms of what we're doing at ISC with Seagate as far as bringing the, uh, the health monitoring uh, dashboard right into DW Spectrum. Spectrum offers the user the ability to, re to retrieve all the recorded video from the drives right through the interface, so you see that the timeline down across the bottom allows the user to expand. So you can go from months to milliseconds just with a roll of a mouse. And at any point, you can click on the timeline. And then as soon as you click on the timeline, all the cameras that are on display are brought back up. You can also reference uh, the time and date through the calendar function. So you can uh, choose a date. So I'll choose the 14th, and I'll choose 2 p.m. on the 14th. So the timeline now represents the 60 minutes of 2 p.m. on February 14th. I click it back to 2.10, and all the cameras that are on display immediately go back to that point. 
if I go and I bring up another camera from that date and time, uh, everything is synchronized to that same date and time as we bring that, that, the uh, video up for that. Bring it back into live, as simple as just hitting the live link there. I can open up another tab, so we can support up to 64 cameras on a single tab. Uh, we can have multiple tabs and multiple instances of the uh, software brought up uh, so that you can create, uh, for instance, command room type environments where you have uh, lots of cameras. So for campuses and schools and things like that, uh, something as simple as you know, 300 cameras covering this campus shown up on the wall, all operated from the controllers down below. Um, searching through all of this video, what we've done in terms of the ease of use of the simplicity of how we search through the video. So we use a, 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 a term that we call smart search, which is just using this little magnifying glass. So for instance, I can set the timeline up here. Uh, let's roll it back to 10 a.m. Then I'm going to use the magnifying glass and I can go and draw a box around an area within the scene. And then down across the timeline here, you'll notice that there's now a red indication. That red indication is that there was movement in that area. Uh, so we see somebody walking through that, uh, the area that I just drew in there. If I redraw the box, it re-indexes. We can index a year's worth of video in about a second and uh, bring up every time there was activity in those places. So we can go back and refer to that uh, from there. Once we've got the video and once we're we're, we're confident uh, that that was the incident that we were looking for. We can use the timeline to then export the video. So you can use a manual process on an event basis and just by clicking and dragging, and you can export the video. And so you can export the video in common formats, being AVI, MKV, or MP4, as well as fully executables and, and um, proprietary format, the NOV format. You can also export the multi-video for every camera that's on display. Again, you can have up to 64 cameras on display and you can export those all simultaneously through this. Uh, another way that we use uh, the Seagate uh, products is in our server settings. Um, here you can add the external storage, how we can add our network attached storage devices or any network attached storage device. Uh, we have our storage analytic that shows by camera how much storage we're taking on a per camera basis. We can use that information as we add additional storage um, using the storage analytic. And finally, let me switch over to this server. You'll see that we also have the ability to set up um, storage to be backup. So we can, we can, in addition to doing a manual backup process in terms of on an event basis, we can also automate the backup process to be either in real time or by schedule and on demand. And we can point that to um, locations where we have uh, storage available. And we can set up the backup storage to have it back up on a nightly basis. Again, this is the full video management software. It also shows up in the uh, CAS product that I talked about as well, so that if uh, we log into a, a CAS system, uh, you would see uh, the exact same, just without a server, it's all built right into the camera itself. Okay. So, I'm gonna try to pass this back to you, Josh. All right, thanks Patrick. We have like lots of questions. It? Yep, we have lots of questions Excellent. coming in, fast and furious. So I wanted to make sure you had time to uh, take a look at those. Um, before we, we navigate away, uh, Patrick, we did have some folks asking to kind of double click a bit on analytics in terms of you know, what the system offers. So I just wonder if you could touch on that. You, you did a tiny bit, but just wonder if you could return to that topic. Sure, absolutely. Great question. So, um, yeah, analytics, we do a lot. So the software, as I mentioned, does have some the smart search capability in that it's looking for pixelization change. We can also take analytic information from edge devices, being cameras that are running analytics. So in the rules engine of the product itself, we have the ability to set up analytic events in the camera. So you'll see I brought up the rules engine here. I can uh, select analytic event. I would go in and select the camera that's running the analytics. So in this case, I'm going to select the west side camera here. 
and the software will read the analytics that are happening in that camera. So, so for instance, uh, a line crossing type of event. And so we can create the rules to do uh, lots of different types of notifications, whether it's email notification, playing a sound, sending an alarm, uh, or we can do pop-ups or, you know, where we can, we can force video from certain cameras, including the camera that, uh, that the analytic violation occurred on, to pop up on a user or a group of users' uh, desktops as well. So we're currently um, handling analytics uh, running on board of uh, lots of different, as well as digital watchdog cameras. Uh, so we have a line of, of cameras that we call the Megapix analytics cameras. Uh, where we're running the analytics on board the camera as well as uh, other manufacturers. So the software is not proprietary to Digital Watchdog. It works with uh, over, I think we're well over 300 manufacturers and uh, over 5,000 different devices, uh, models of uh, products that are compatible with the software. Um, so I should also mention as I'm thinking about it here, uh, in terms of showing our uh, panoramic technology. Um, so we'll, and so this is our 48 megapixel uh, four sensor, 12 megapixels per. So uh, when we talk about um, 48 megapixels and having that pixel density and we're, and we're driving that, we need the storage for, uh, you know, our larger systems are designed for this type of technology so that when you zoom in, whether you go ahead and drop box around an object, or if you just double click on the object and zoom in, you get the pixel density to be able to see uh, what's in the distance there. So you, you'll see this is just some recorded video from our 48 megapixel, but as I zoom across the bay there, so the bridge tender's uh, house there is about 1,600 feet away from the camera, but you'll notice the frame rate, the car is going across the bridge. So we're generating lots of data between the pixel density uh, as well as the frame rate. So the combination of those two with the 48 megapixel uh, really gives us the benefit uh, of being able to drill in uh, after the fact and still have pixel density without having uh, distortion. So we get the, the uh, clarity of the image. Okay. Any other questions, Josh? That I should... Yeah, let me take a quick look, uh, Patrick. I'll tell you what we'll do. Right. Um, let me go ahead and jump in here. We'll kind of wrap up the, the formal presentation, and then we'll I'll give you time to catch your breath and uh, also scan some of the questions that are out there. Uh, and uh, I've been writing down some as well. So uh, anything that, that you don't catch, I will catch. Um, I wanted to jump okay. in here really quick and uh, make a, a quick plug for Seagate Insider for Partners. And as a channel reseller, integrator, consultant, or even a, just a business owner, uh, membership is uh, free for the program and it gives you access to the latest tools, sales aids, training, support materials, all that from Seagate. And uh, if you're not a member and receive today's invitation from a colleague, we encourage you to take a few mo moments and sign up after the webinar. It's really cool. And uh, if you are into surveillance, we have an entire ecosystem in there uh, of materials and support. So that is my quick commercial uh, for the program. Um, I did want to let people know how they can actually access that. So let me go ahead and advance the slide. It's at www.seagate.com forward slash partners. Um, takes about a few minutes. And uh, when you're in, you're in. You get uh, access to a monthly newsletter, and we cover all sorts of topics and even great sessions like the ones today with uh, some of our ecosystem partners. Um, after that, I wanted to, uh, Mark, I, uh, I know in the background, has been fielding questions for you, Patrick. You've been taking a look at some, some questions in the background. So has Jessica. Um, I did want to circle back. By the way, uh, just a quick plug, Patrick, you've got some real smart search groupies. I don't know where all these people came from, but they are just screaming and yelling how, what a cool feature that is. Um, so just know that they're on the line. And um, <laughs> <laughs> wanted to uh, come back. Uh, somebody asked about warranties. They, they wanted to know the warranty on the Blackjack servers, you know, five-year limited. Um, what, what, what do you say? Ah, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, the uh, the Blackjack servers do include a five-year limited warranty, which includes a five-year warranty on the hard drives. Uh, so we cover the components for three years and the hard drives for five. 
Good question. Okay, great. Yeah, I did. Great. I, I did also see another question here from uh, Joe regarding uh, the ability in terms of, of license plates and license plate capture. So currently, right now, what you'll find on our website as well as uh, on our demos is we have a uh, four megapixel license plate camera with a remote zoom and autofocus capability. Um, we are uh, looking forward towards uh, towards ISC for the re release of some new products that we've got coming up that allow for more search capability. So we are working on, as uh, Jessica mentioned earlier, in terms of you know, generating metadata, uh, being able to then go in and search that metadata, including license plate information. So uh, Jessica shared the booth number with you earlier, um, but by all means, if you're coming to ISC, please check us out. That, by, for those that are not attending, it's in, uh, it's in early April, and we should have some, some news out around that time frame as far as the ability to, to search metadata, things like license plate numbers, states, car color, all of that type of metadata uh, that we're, we're partnering with analytic solutions uh, to capture that metadata and feed it back into the video management software that you just saw. Great, great. I also saw a question, uh, just jumping in real quick, Patrick, somebody, uh, you know, over the years, we didn't really get this question, but now we have people bidding on jobs with lots of cameras. So naturally, somebody's asking, you know, what the maximum number of cameras a Blackjack server will support? Ah, yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned, we do have a wide variety of, of servers, and really the maximum number of cameras depends on the type of camera in terms of the frame rate and the resolution of the camera. So if it's, for instance, uh, you know, a 2 megapixel camera, our E-Rack will support 128 cameras. Our new X-Rack product will support over 200 cameras uh, on the X-Rack product itself. But as you increase the resolution, so as we go to the 4s and the, and the 5 megapixel product, uh, uh, we, re we reduce the number of cameras, but Spectrum allows you to merge the servers together, as we showed the, the two in Cerritos as well as the one in, in Tampa are merged together. And so you can just add servers to the system uh, to handle that processing. So if you're going all the way up to the, the 48 megapixel, you might have servers with, uh, you know, seven to 10 cameras, whether it's the 48 megapixel or the 21 megapixel. We also have a 16 megapixel version uh, of these panoramic cameras. These, the, when I say panoramic camera, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, single Cat5, so it's a single install, single license, but it's got multiple imagers uh, attached to it to capture that uh, full situational awareness of everything that's happening in either a 180 or a 360 or 270 type of, of, of view. Okay. Got it. Yeah, lots of, lots of questions coming in about resolution. I mean, overall, kind of a trending question, people are asking what the maximum resolution is supported by DW Spectrum. Yeah, yeah. So the largest one that we have to date right now is is the 48 megapixel, which is which essentially consists of four 12 megapixel sensors. Um, but we handle all different varieties all the way up to that uh, to that 48 megapixel. So, um, can I can you pass me the ball one more time, Josh? Sorry, I shouldn't. Have. Sure, sure, you bet. I should show you, for instance, um, the. Uh, You should okay. get that right about now. There it is. Thank okay. you very much. I'm now becoming a WebEx expert. You're an expert. Um, you don't need me anymore. <laughs> so uh, we'll see, for instance, on our 9 megapixel fisheye, uh, where we have lots of pixel density within that 9 megapixel view. Uh, one of the unique things that we do in DW Spectrum is the dewarping capability. So within those, we can go in and, and do that as either a, a 9, a 180, or a 360. So we're digitally dewarping that image and moving it around. Uh, we can also use what our region of interest feature here to go in and draw boxes around particular areas of the scene. So if I want to watch the coffee pot there in Cerritos, and I also want to watch the copier in Cerritos, I can watch those all from a single camera um, just like that. Okay. Very cool. Let me uh, right. jump in real quick. Um, Patrick, yeah. we did have some questions uh, pivoting back to Jessica. Um, 
Jessica, I know you've been seeing some of the questions come in. Kind of a, on a theme, if you look across the board, people are asking generally spec differences between Skyhawk, Skyhawk AI, and Exos. You know, you presented a slide that had them all together. Um, just wondering if uh, you can give a high level, and we'll also let people know where they can go to, to deep dive that if they want to go you know, line by line. For sure, yeah. If you want to see more of a deep dive where we actually have a comparison table on our website, go to our Seagate Skyhawk product page, but at a very high level, uh, Skyhawk is going to be more of your mainstream surveillance drive. Um, it's going to be able to support up to 64 high definition cameras. It's going to run 24 by 7. Um, but really dif the difference, and thank you, um, Joshua, for pulling this up, the difference between Skyhawk and Skyhawk AI is going to be that AI optimization. Um, so it's going to, moving up to Skyhawk AI means that you're going to still get that support for 64 high definition cameras, but you're also going to be able to support 32 AI streams as well. Um, there's also going to be a slight increase as well, actually three times uh, the uh, workload rate uh, to 550 terabytes, and then a slight increase on the reliability spec of MTBF uh, up from 1 million to 1.5 million. Um, but obviously, both Skyhawk and Skyhawk AI are going to be a better fit than what our compute drive or our desktop drive would be with Barracuda, because Barracuda, we do have some customers that come back to us and say that they use uh, Barracuda for their surveillance systems and are highly disappointed. And the reasons for that is because it was never built for surveillance. Um, it's really only built to support 8x5, not 24x7. Um, it doesn't support uh, cameras, and it has a lower warranty rate, uh, workload rate, actually three times less workload rate than your standard surveillance drive like Skyhawk. Uh, so those are really things to consider as you're looking to build your build out the storage for your surveillance system. Um, it really does matter at the end of the day, and ultimately what you're trying to do with um, a surveillance system is capture the data so if you need it later, or if you're going to do analytics, it's all there. Um, and if you don't choose the right drive for the right applications, it can have longer t term implications. That's great. And that's definitely the short version of that. Um, so I definitely recommend folks uh, hit the website. And speaking of the website, um, Jessica, we did have somebody ask just generally how to calculate the storage that they may need, right? We always ask that, and people are bidding on contracts. Um, but how do you know, and, and what can we do to help them calculate that? Yeah, so on our website as well as we have a calculating tool that you can find, um, I think, two tiles down. Um, there's a green button, um, and if you click on it, there's several factors. It's not a simple math equation that you can just write out on paper. Um, we provide a tool, and I don't know if you can, if I can share my screen real quick. Um, I could share my yeah. screen. Yeah, let me do that. Probably a picture says a thousand words. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's a great tool, and I was going to share that out in chat as well for those people to catch up. Yeah, for sure. We have a lot of people that find this very, very handy. Um, so basically, there's a number of factors and levers that you can pull um, to determine exactly how much storage you need. Uh, so number of cameras, obviously, is a big factor. Number of frames per second, if you're increasing the, the clarity of that. Um, and also hours per day, are you using it 24 by 7? Uh, numbers, number of days stored, so that retention number is also going to significantly impact it. And obviously, if you go all the way to 4K, that is going to dramatically increase your storage. But at the end of the day, you know, even if you have to use more storage, the implication is the, that if you have that storage with all that data, you can do deeper analytics as well. Um, and the more clear and higher resolution that data is, obviously will improve those analytics over time. So um, obviously a few levers here, a very cool to tool to use. Um, check it out. Very cool. We are all about sales and marketing enablement. Hey, Jessica, I, I wanted to circle back um, as we kind of wind things up here and just wanted to clarify because uh, we have had some people ask questions. Um, when we talk about um, the Skyhawk health management, right? That just sounds sort of like a feature of a drive, but it's really more than that, right? We're talking about it's kind of the relationship between the drive and the actual um, host product enabled to uh, activate that feature and, and get the most out of it. Is that is that a true assumption? 
Yeah, so one of the big differentiating factors with Skyhawk and Skyhawk AI is that we have what's called Skyhawk Health Management, and it's really a health drive health monitoring uh, piece of software that's bundled onto all our drives, um, and it works from 4 terabytes up to 14 terabytes um, on certain systems, um, but and also it will be working on uh, DWs in, in the near term. Uh, at IST West, you can actually see a demo of it. Um, what's really cool about it is, is that it's going to be providing prevention, intervention, and recovery options. So over time, you're going to have where you can see trend lines on certain factors like temperature and vibration um, and different operational values that are going to affect the longevity of your hard drive. And because of the AI algorithms that we have within the software, it can uh, figure out, hey, this is a red flag. You may want to consider um, taking some preventive actions. And we don't only just give you those red flags and say, okay, we're done. We let you know it's a red flag. Figure it out on your own. We actually take that next step and try to diagnose it for you as well, you know, as providing next steps. So um, what does that look like? Does it mean backing up to a, another drive, replacing that drive, or is there other steps to remedying? Uh, the issue so that you don't have to completely uh, replace it. Um, so we realize that over time, you know, drives are going to have um, certain issues. And so we're going to try to let you know beforehand so that you can uh, take those actions so you're not going to lose any of your data. Um, and ultimately, say there's a natural disaster, you lose all of your data. Super unfortunate, right? Um, but that can be crippling to businesses. Um, what we offer, unlike any of our competitors, is that we have optional data rescue services. You pay an upfront fee of like $10 when you buy the drive, and if anything happens to that drive, you drop it and you lose all your data. You uh, have a natural disaster, just flood, fire, whatever. You send it back to us, and our engineers actually extract all that data for you, send it back to you in a new drive, and you're good to go. Um, so there's some real benefits and our customers tell us all the time, hey, we didn't even know this existed. This is beyond helpful. Um, and we are, it's like an insurance policy on your drive. Yeah, very, very cool. I want, I want to make sure we got that distinction out there because there really is a lot of work, a lot of um, collaboration that goes on behind the scenes to make those, you know, the host device and the drive um, shake hands and get that feature to really become, you know, an added value for the reseller. Um, wanted to see if there were any other questions that you saw, Jessica or Patrick, that you wanted to address today before we uh, close things out and pick our winner for today. I, uh, I can hear like, you reading. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, scrolling, scrolling. Uh, a lot of great questions. Um, I, it's almost overwhelming with all the questions. I think they were all great questions. Um, one of the questions that was interesting was, hey, what does the government sector look at like as far as growth? And although we don't really have that broken out, um, I'll, I'll have to look and see if I can actually find that. Um, but what we do know, based on other reports and IDC reports as well, is that the surveillance market is growing 18%. I, with a cumulative annual growth um, rate. So it's significant and it's growing exponentially, really. It's super fast. That's all I got, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's great. Patrick, any, any last words before I jump in here and uh, take the floor? No, take the floor. All right, cool demo, by the way. Uh, we're going to have to figure out how to capture that so we can reproduce it ourselves. Um, if, for, if for no other reason than we want to use the term de-warping. I just love that word. I'm not sure you made that up, but that's now my new word for the week. Um, <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, we want to thank you so much uh, for attending today's webinar. We did show you um, a sneak peek of Seagate Insider for Partners. So if you are a uh, channel reseller, integrator, consultant, business owner, that is the place to go. That is the program to be in uh, to get further enablement on the surveillance topic from Seagate. Um, also training as well. I, I failed to mention that there's uh, quite a bit of training in there. And we also have back webinar recordings like the ones we have today that are in there to, uh, for you to play on demand. 
Um, also, um, if you like today's training session, um, let us know. We'll, we'll send you a, uh, a sort of a wrap-up email. And everybody who is attending today's session will get a copy of the deck as well as a link to the recording. And uh, keep us honest. Let us know what else you'd like to see in future sessions. Um, it's great we get folks like Digital Watchdog to come on and, and talk about you know, solving real-world customer problems with solutions and with Seagate, it's really a one plus one equal three opportunity. So we want to make sure you're getting the most out of it. And uh, I do believe, Jessica, we have pulled the name from our random name picker. So I want to throw out there that Curtis Helm, if you're on the line, go ahead and reach out to me. It's joshua.walty at seagate.com. And uh, you are the recipient of an eight terabyte Skyhawk drive. And thank you very much, Jessica. Uh, eight terabytes, that's a lot. But as uh, Patrick just showed us, uh, that can be filled up pretty quickly, depending on the application. So uh, we expect uh, Curtis will be back for more drives pretty soon. Anyway, from all of us here at Seagate, uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, I want to definitely thank Patrick for joining, lending us his expertise. And Jessica, as always, thanks for um, giving us a, a great presentation on surveillance um, and a little bit more thought leadership as well as some product overview. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.